Okay, so we're going to try this problem. Um, you have a hill of height h, and an object is moved from point A to C in two different ways. Uh, one way is it's going directly along the slope, so it's going in a straight line from A to C. And the second is it's going from A to B uh, horizontally, it's traveling horizontally from A to B, and then it's rising up vertically from B to C. Uh, you have to calculate the work done by gravity on an object of mass m as it's transported from A to C along both in, in both these ways. And that's what you need to do. So as always, please pause the video now and see if you can work it out yourself. Your answer should be in terms of the height of the hill h. Um, and only once you've given it a try, then you can take a look at how I do it. All right, so let's calculate the work done along the path. So we're, we're calculating the work done by gravity. along the path uh, AB and then BC. Okay, so what is the work done as the object is transported from A to B, work done by gravity? Now as it's going from A to B, the force of gravity is always downwards and it's constant, mg. So what is the, and, and uh, the displacement is from A to B, right? So what is the work done? Clearly the work done will be zero because uh, the displacement is uh, perpendicular to the force. And by the way, it's okay to use the simple formula for work because the force is constant and the displacements we are considering are in a straight line. So uh, the force and the displacement AB are perpendicular. So mg is perpendicular to AB, and so the work done is zero. All right, what about the work done in going from B to C? So work done in going from B to C would be force, again, which is MD, MG, I mean, multiplied by the displacement, which is H. So here is the mass forces downwards multiplied by the angle between the force and the displacement what is that angle remember that it's going from B to C so that angle will be cosine of 180 degrees and so the work done in going from B to C is equal to minus mgh so the total amount of work done would be W A to B plus W B to C. So that's going to be 0 minus mgh, which is equal to minus mgh, and that's the answer. So the total amount of work done in going from A to C along the path AB and then BC is going to be minus mgh. Now we're going to calculate the work done in going from A to C. So let's say that the particle is over here uh, on its way from A to C along the straight line. The force acting on the particle is just mg, right? And the displacement is from A to C. All right. So we are going to do this in two different ways. So uh, this height is h. One way, so method one, is uh, we will just use the formula work equals f dot t or force multiplied by displacement multiplied by cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. All right, so we know what the force is. The force is mg, right? What about the displacement? From trig, um, if this angle is alpha, then ac is going to be um, so, so let's try to figure out what AC will be. 
uh, in terms of the h and the angle alpha, right? So we can see that uh, h divided by ac is equal to sine alpha. Is that correct? Yes. h divided by ac is sine alpha. So that means ac, that's what we are interested in, that's our displacement, is going to be h divided by sine alpha. All right. Okay. Now, so we figured out the displacement as well, right? Now we need to know what is the angle between the force and the displacement. Now the displacement is from A to C, right? So the angle between the force and the displacement is this angle. Now what is this angle going to be? This angle would be, uh, let's think about it, this angle right here, this is 90 minus alpha or pi over 2 minus alpha, right? And so what is this angle going to be? Remember that um, the angle that we are interested in plus the little angle uh, in, in, in yellow, pi, pi over 2 minus alpha, add up to 180 degrees. So this angle will be uh, 180 minus 180, I mean 90 minus alpha, right? Which is 90 plus alpha. So the angle that we are interested in is 90 plus alpha, and I'll just erase this and write 90 plus alpha here just, just to reduce the clutter. And you can see that 90 plus alpha plus 90 minus alpha add up to 180 degrees, as you'd expect. So the angle between the force and the displacement is 90 plus alpha, right? So let's plug that in into the formula for work, and then we'll have the answer right away. So work would be equal to um, mg, which is the force, multiplied by the displacement, which is h divided by sine alpha, multiplied by cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement, as we just found out, that's pi over 2 plus alpha. All right, so let's just clean this up. This is the answer, but let's just clean this up, pi over 2 plus alpha. So we can use a trig identity that cosine of 90 plus an angle is minus of sine of that angle. And that just basically comes from the formula. If you're interested in the proof of that, if you use the formula cosine pi over 2 plus alpha is cosine pi over 2 cosine alpha minus sine pi over 2 sine alpha. This is a standard formula. And so uh, cosine pi over 2 is 0, sine 90 is 1, so you get minus sine alpha. So we're just using that identity here. So if you do that, you get... Uh, minus mg h divided by sine alpha and then sine alpha. So I replaced cosine pi over 2 plus alpha as minus sine alpha and this cancels out and you get, look at this, you get minus mgh. Same answer that we got uh, when we calculated the work done along the other path. So the work done in going from a to b and then b to c is minus mgh and that's also the work done in going from a to c. Now, why are these two the same? They, they, they are the same because gravity is a conservative force, right? Okay, now I'll, I'm going to show you this method is okay, but there's a better method of calculating the work done if you want to go along the uh, slanted path, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So here is the hill again. This is C, this is A, this is B. Okay, this method doesn't require any complicated trig identities. This, this angle is alpha. All right, so this is method two in calculating the work done going from A to C along the slanted path. All right, so um, you have mg acting down like this. Now, a convenient thing to do is to break up the mg into two components one along the incline and the other perpendicular to the incline. So this is something that we've done before. 
in chapter 4 and 5. So we choose a perpendicular axis like this and an axis parallel to the incline like that. And we break up the mg into two components. So let's do that. So let's break mg into one component like this. So one component will look like this. The other component will look like that. And you know from geometry, and we've seen this in chapter 5 as well, that if this angle here is alpha, then this angle here will be alpha as well. And so now let's write down the components of mg and just work with the components rather than mg itself. So this one will be mg sine alpha. Remember that the component that's not on the angle is always the sine component. And this one will be mg cosine alpha. All right. Now let's calculate the work done by each of these components, right? Now, will mg cosine alpha do any work? The answer is no, because the object is moving from A to C and mg cosine alpha is in the perpendicular direction. So it's not doing any work at all. So work done by mg cosine alpha is zero because it's always perpendicular to the displacement. What about the work done by mg sine alpha? All right, so mg sine alpha is in a uh, direction that's uh, parallel to the direction of the displacement. Actually, it's opposite to the direction of the displacement. So we can just use the formula for work here and calculate the work done by mg sine alpha. So that is going to be force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. We just need to plug in these three things carefully. So the force is now mg sine alpha. The displacement is, H, uh, is AC, right? So I'll just write that as AC for now. And what is the angle between the force and the displacement? Remember that the force is mg sine alpha. The displacement is uh, from A to C. So the angle between them obviously is 180 degrees. So cosine of 180 degrees. All right. So we already figured out what AC is uh, from, from trig. It is, it's just H divided by sine, sine alpha. So you get mg sine alpha, H divided by sine alpha times negative 1. And you get exactly the same answer, minus mgh. So this method is a little bit better. So this is the work done in going from A to C. This method is a slightly better because you don't need to use these trig identities, which you might or might not have remembered. And uh, it's convenient always to break up a force into components and then just work with the components. That's always very easy. So, so I would prefer this method in, in figuring this out.